this is one of my, literally my personal missions in life. Um, I have in the last three months connected through various outlets with people who are looking to move to New Orleans and who reached out to me through, you know, my, through various networks and said, thinking about coming to New Orleans, would love to come there. And for me, that's the best thing that anybody could say. So I've had phone conversations remotely with people. I've emailed. I've made remote introductions to people. I've, um, you know, when people come into town, talk about neighborhoods, talk about where to go, who to meet with, you know, share my, my information and my knowledge of a city that I've lived in my whole life and that I'm passionate about. And so the result of that is, you know, somebody who I met six months ago is now, you know, working in my building at a capital investment firm, and his firm and my firm are doing a project together. My name's Vera Lester, and I work for an organization called Greater New Orleans Inc. That's a regional economic development agency. I raise money for them and build relationships, make connections, um, and that's what I do the rest of the time. My personal mission in life is to keep as many people here as possible. Downtown New Orleans is a really interesting place because it's small compared to other downtowns, but also compared to other downtowns, it is always alive. I lived in Chicago for four years, and the amazing thing about Chicago downtown is that at 5 p.m. everything closes down. And you can walk the streets at 5.45 and it's a ghost town. And downtown New Orleans never really stops. It's so awesome how different things are now. And they're different in a way, they're different in a great way, and they are not different in a way that we all feared, that all of us, uh, us locals feared. You know, immediately after the storm, I think a lot of folks were worried that we would be um, homogenized and, and, and that all of this outside money and people would come in and they would make us look more like Dallas. Instead, what happened was it made everybody, Katrina took away all of our excuses. We all were really apathetic. We had all been beaten down for such a long time about, well, this is just how it is. New Orleans is just, you know, dangerous. New Orleans is just, you know, New Orleans has a crappy education system. That's just how it is. That will never change. And Katrina gave us this strange opportunity to really make a difference, to really change how, how we did business. And it's really extraordinary how far we've come in a little less than six years, I think, in that regard, in terms of um, really changing our expectations, our demands for our you know, city leadership, our demands for the school system, our demands in terms of crime, physical infrastructure, and our vision of ourselves has changed too. Like we're no longer a redheaded stepchild. I live in Faber St. John. I have a 1,250 square foot house, one bedroom, live alone, three cats, I'm the cat lady. I bought it for $138,000. Put a lot of sweat equity into it, you know, but Still, extraordinary value for the money. I live across the street from a restaurant, from two restaurants, around the corner from three more restaurants. I have two coffee shops, two grocery stores, uh, a public park all within two blocks, one of the largest city parks in the country, three blocks from my house. And once a year, I am a block from the greatest music festival in the country. So. I mean, my favorite part is getting up every morning and going to City Park and walking around the bayou and seeing the, duck, the ducklings grow up. Honestly, that's my favorite part of living here right now.